tires <laughs> hello everyone and welcome today is a beautiful day not just because it's sunny outside but because we are sitting inside of the c8 corvette the brand new 2020 corvette the day has arrived to test this thing out and right off the bat they're getting that launch in so the big change of course with this corvette is that the engine is no longer up front now it's in the back and as a result you get this very impressive launch it actually feels kind of like an all-wheel drive car as far as how the launch is executed because it is so quick off the line and this is on all season tires you can actually get this with stickier summer tires and yet on these specific michelin uh, all season tires it still launches really well which i'm super surprised by now once you get into second gear i mean first gear has a really aggressive ratio and it really hits you with that torque once you get into second gear you do start to kind of feel it start to taper off but power is very good 195 horsepower with the optional exhaust. You're down five horsepower there if you don't have that optional performance exhaust and 470 pound feet of torque. So the thing moves and of course as you get to higher speeds it's not going to move quite as quickly but the launch off the line with this thing is insanely good thanks to the placement of that engine. We started to see with the previous generation Corvette that as it got more horsepower it's zero to 60 didn't improve and that's because it was traction limited not power limited and now we're back in the scenario where this car right here is back to being power limited and so we're going to start to see quicker and quicker variants of this vehicle as it continues on into production but we are starting with the very first the base Corvette and you know impressive that they're able to bring this in with a starting price at about sixty thousand dollars you can option it up as high as you'd like uh, this car that we're sitting in right now is about seventy five thousand dollars you can get the z51 performance package for an extra five grand it adds a ton of features certainly worth doing this one we are sitting in is not that z51 tomorrow we're going to be spending some time at the track to get a feel for those upgrades and it's quite the list better tires better Better brakes, better suspension, it has a more aggressive final drive ratio, it has revised front splitter and rear spoiler. They even allow you to adjust the spring height at each of the different corners so you can corner balance it with the Z51 package. Quite cool that that's included on a car right out of the factory. So let's dive through the different systems on this car with the logical place to start being that engine. So it's a 6.2 liter engine, it's right behind me there. Uh, overhead valve, meaning that this engine has two valves per cylinder it's still using push rods and there was a time actually my channel is old enough now that it was in existence before the c7 launched and when the c7 corvette launched i kind of complained and said why uh, would gm still be making an engine with two valves per cylinder and this outdated push rod technology and over the years i've come to appreciate exactly how awesome this engine is i mean it has a large wide flat torque curve it makes great power 495 horsepower is plenty uh, it's got good torque it's compact it's lightweight relative to its size and so there's a lot of benefits of push rod engines uh, and yes you could have higher breathing this thing revs to 6400 rpm and then it's done it's not that high of a revving engine but it has the torque band and that's actually what you're using and so as far as accessible power accessible torque you know you've got the whole rev range and it's fun throughout it so i've really been enjoying this engine and it is quite spectacular when you put your foot down we did just pass a cop but i think that means they're that way so so... <laughs> So they've made some revisions to this engine so that it's able to make more power. One of the big changes is because it's no longer up front, it's no longer going to obstruct visibility. And so they're able to put the hood down lower and with the engine back here, they can actually increase the size of the intake manifold, which is more beneficial for those higher end uh, power, the top end of the engine. And so because they've increased that size of the intake manifold, it doesn't really obstruct your view because it's not in front of you. So the hood height is still good and you get more power. So they say by revising that intake manifold equal length runners and a larger plenum first time it's had equal length runners they're able to eke out another three percent horsepower from this engine another change is instead of the exhaust pipes going down the exhaust pipes come up and by improving the exhaust flow they've increased power another one percent so this engine fairly simple in design you just have one camshaft sitting in the center of that v it does have variable valve timing though of course that affects both the intake and exhaust simultaneously 
because it's just that one camshaft. And then you've got push rods to open and close those intake and exhaust valves. Now to help with some of the burden that those push rods add in reciprocating mass, the intake valves are actually hollow and the exhaust valves are sodium filled to help bring some of the heat away from that combustion chamber. So an improvement in power with the new engine and it's stuck behind you now. And then that is matched to an eight speed and for the first time with a Corvette, dual clutch transmission. So the shifts are actually superb. And the sad news here is that there is no manual transmission. And yes, there should be a manual transmission and I'm sad that it's not here. However, this is a very good dual clutch. So you can push this little manual button right here. Another cool thing they do with the manual version is if you rev it all the way, it will just sit there. It's not gonna force a shift. So it's purely your control. It's not gonna say, okay, we're not gonna let you do anything stupid. If you wanna just sit there at 6,400 RPM, it'll let you, which you shouldn't do, but uh, the option is there to put it in manual mode and it will completely just be at your control, which is nice. And with that manual shifting mode, the shifts are so fast. So just like uh, the design strategy with a Shelby GT500, where these paddle shifters are connected directly to the transmission control unit. So both of them have Tremec transmissions, both of them having the paddle shifters go directly to the transmission control unit. And so this eliminates a lot of the delay in when you push the button and when you actually get the shift. So the shift comes very quickly after pushing that button and it is nice to have that response. Dual clutch transmissions are a beautiful thing if you're not gonna have three pedals. So I uh, just wish they would have at least offered it as an option. However, manuals make up less than 2% of sales in the United States, so you can kind of get why they didn't do it, even if it makes me very sad. Why'd you have to make me sad? From that transmission, we of course split the power through a differential. Now in the car that I am sitting in right now, it has a mechanical style differential, and then you can upgrade to the Z51 package and get an electronic limited slip differential that can actually vary the pressure on that clutch pack. So it can be basically open uh, up to 100% lockup. And so it gives you complete control uh, through you know tuning uh, for various scenarios, how much lockup do you want to have in that limited slip clutch versus this just has a set low on it and so you know different styles there personally I tend to prefer just mechanical style clutches because there's no guessing in what the computer is doing you always know how your differential is going to act um, and sometimes I've found mechanical limited slip diffs to be a little twitchy because that does something you don't expect that said I haven't driven uh, this latest version with the electronic limited slip diff so I can't speak to that directly but previously I have enjoyed mechanical style limited slip differentials quite a bit and you get that with the base car. So, you know, you might be wondering, can anyone actually get into this for $60,000? And for the first model year, the answer is yes. Um, and, and honestly, you don't necessarily need to have that Z51 package if you're never gonna push it. This is on all season tires and it still has like 0.99 Gs of lateral grip. It's still zero to 60 in three seconds. The Z51 gets you zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds. So yes, it's a little bit quicker. Uh, it's $5,000 more, is it worth it? Yes, you get a lot of upgrades for that Z51 package, but if you know you're not the type of person that needs all that stuff, you don't, and the car's still gonna be really fast. How fast? This thing has a top speed of 194 miles per hour. From that differential, we go out to the tires and we get to our brakes, those brakes, Brembo brakes, quite big, actually larger diameter in the rear than up front, though the front has a slightly wider width. So because this has a 40-60 weight distribution, a lot of the braking is reliant on those rear rotors and so they're quite large uh, relative to what you would see on a front engine car. 20 inch wheels in the back, 19 inch up front and 305s in the rear for plenty of grip. So this car has really good stopping distance, really good acceleration. One of the interesting things though about the grip in this car is that if you look at the peak performance numbers, they're actually less according to Motor Trend's testing of braking and lateral G versus the previous generation and so they upgraded from a pilot super sport to a pilot sport 4s 
However, grip has gone slightly down. And so I was asking the chief engineer, you know, what's going on with the grip here? Why has peak performance actually gone down? And he said in this car for this generation, they actually sought out, let's not just go for the record book numbers that you can put in that magazine. We're trying to have a more balanced car that's more approachable in all livable aspects. And so one of the things that's greatly improved in this car versus the previous generation is how well the tires perform when it starts to get colder and how well the tires perform when it is wet outside. So it's going for a broader uh, reach of when is it in the ideal conditions. It has a larger range of when it's going to be quite capable out on the road. So kind of cool. Uh, I was just a little disappointed that some of the peak numbers weren't as good as I was expecting them to be now that it has better weight distribution for braking test scenarios. Now I will continue to believe that any car could be made that, that weighs less, but at the price point this is coming in at, the fact that it's 3,535 pounds is actually a pretty respectable curb weight, all things considered. What you're getting, I mean, this interior is actually genuinely nice, especially for a Corvette. To me, it was a little off-putting at first because there's a lot of things going on in here and it's kind of distracting to the eye, uh, but as far as Corvette interiors goes, it's way nicer as far as the materials. All the shiny stuff that you see is actually real metal. Uh, the layout, it's all oriented towards the driver. I'm not sold so far on this steering wheel in this weird shape that it is. I feel like the nine and three are actually forces you to put your hands down a little bit rather than right at the sides. Something about that I find a little bit strange, but overall the interior is definitely a huge improvement over the previous generation. Something else really impressive is the fact that the ride quality is so good. And yes, right now we're just on this crazy nice flat road and so we're not going to notice the ride quality, but we were driving through Las Vegas earlier today and all kinds of bumpy situations within the city and it actually handles it really well and it's a nice comfortable ride. So the suspension tuning is excellent. Double wishbone suspension up front, double wishbone suspension in the rear and you can upgrade to the Magna Rheological. Uh, if I said that anywhere near close to accurate, who knows, but the magnetic style suspension you can upgrade to and improve ride quality through that because it can adapt to all kinds of different scenarios and do so very quickly. So let's get into the drive experience sitting in here and they say jet fighter inspired just like everyone says the interior of their sports car is jet fighter inspired but everything really is turned to you quite a bit and as a passenger I honestly wasn't that stoked about riding in this car because you're kind of completely separate from the driver. This is a driver's car. Everything is for the driver and nothing is for the passenger over there. Yeah, they have their own little controls on this weird center stock thing, uh, but you're, you're really, you know, left behind over there and it's just all about the driver in this car. So, you know, that could be a little bit challenging if it's like, hey, would you figure out the navigation? And it's like, no, there's like a wall of China in the way. Sorry, I can't get to it. But regardless, for the driver, it's actually pretty cool. Now, as far as visibility, I was actually expecting, based on what I had read about this car, that it was going to be better. And part of the thing is, yes, you know, the, the front of the car is much closer to you, but you're also pretty far away from the windshield. And so you kind of do have this narrow slit. And it's not that visibility out the front is bad, it's just kind of narrow, and the windshield's really far away from you. So it wasn't as amazing as I had kind of read about, you know, how, how great's the visibility in the new car now that you're right up front. And then looking out the back, is awful. So rear visibility out through this hatch, I mean, it's just terrible. And part of that, it's a mid-engine, right? So it's complicated to make that visibility good. I think some other mid-engine cars have done a much better job of it. And as a result, one of the things they do is they give you a digital mirror here if you have you know, eyes that can't adjust to digital mirrors that quickly looking back and forth, you can use a traditional style mirror and look out the back. It's just, you don't really see anything. So you might as well just use the digital one. And the digital one is actually pretty nice. Driving this thing, it just feels really approachable because even from a dig, even just from zero miles per hour, you stomp on it, you're expecting, okay, I'm gonna get some wheel spin. And instead it just takes off because it's got all the weight on the rear axle. And so it can actually handle the power that it has. And that's what's really cool about it. It's just a very approachable, very fast machine because all of the weight's sitting there on top of those driven wheels, and so when you want to put power down, it does it. And this road, you know, the speed limit's been about miles per hour on it, and you never come anywhere close to feeling like, oh, like we're pushing it. Like this thing is just on a casual stroll out here. And tomorrow, I'm going to get to spend some time on the track and kind of really stretch its legs and see what it feels like. But today, it's just, you know, this, this thing can handle so much more than we're putting at it right now. 
And it's cool that it has that approachability feel. Like the interior is a bit intimidating. You feel like you're in something super expensive, just kind of looking at the exterior of the car, looking at the interior of the car, the way it's designed. It's like, this thing's a beast, it's ready to go. But when you start driving it actually, it's, it's very simple and it's forgiving and it lets you do what you wanna do and it makes you kind of feel, oh, actually I know what I'm doing. When, you know, it's actually a lot of clever engineering that went into creating that feeling. So it's, it's a cool vehicle to drive. As far as the throttle pedal feel, I mean, it's hard to beat naturally aspirated engines. And really this thing just has a great torque curve across the RPM range. So you never really feel like it's lacking when you put your foot down, even if you've gotten into, you know, a little bit of a lower RPM. It's still got plenty of rent there. And then if you actually shift correctly, yeah, it's ready to move. So, man, this transmission, so fast. The shifts are so fast. They say under 100 milliseconds for shifting, and it is hardly perceptible. Of course, with dual clutch transmissions, you get constant torque, so it's really neat. You're just shifting between two clutch packs, so you always have positive acceleration. Very cool feeling. How's our brake pedal? Yeah. Ooh, there we got some wheel spin, all right. <laughs> Little less grip on that cement bridge, it seemed, versus some of the other pavement we've been on. Actually spun up a little bit, that's pretty fun. They've also added a ton of customization here. So there's about six different drive modes. Two of them, you can actually create the parameters of what you want them to be, one of which being this Z mode, where there's a button right here on the steering wheel that you can push. And it defaults to kind of a mix between sport and track mode. Uh, so nice that you can customize your own individual modes of, you know, you just hit that button and you're in exactly all the settings that you want. And it will leave that when you turn the car on and off. As far as the steering, there are different modes. So it's going to feel different depending on which mode you're in right now it feels pretty light and we're in touring mode and overall you know the response is certainly there which is nice and so it's got somewhat of a high ratio 15.7 to 1 uh, but quite responsive and this is on all season tires so usually you know I feel like if I'm on an all season tire I'm gonna probably start to see the response fade away and it's not doing so on this so the steering feels good and again it just kind of feels very approachable it doesn't feel scary in any way and, and often with like the Z06 of the previous generation and who knows what it would be like with this but it was a bit intimidating to drive and this doesn't have that intimidation it just says go for it but the real story of course with this car is the value you know if you go back 20 years and you look at the Ferraris and the McLarens of the world yes they were doing things that you know nobody else was doing but that's because nobody else cost as much right and so it's like it's a it's a performance for the value and, and if you look at today companies are doing everything that Ferrari's doing, right? And now Corvette's coming in and saying, look, we can be just like that. Zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds with a naturally aspirated rear wheel drive vehicle for $60,000. I mean, it's just unbelievable the amount of performance that you're getting from this thing for the dollar. These, there's kind of cars that have created these new waves of performance whether it was you know, the Nissan GTR in 2008 or the Tesla Model S showing us how fast we could get longitudinal acceleration just in a straight line, zero to 60 in 2.4 seconds, especially considering its price. And you know, now we've got a $60,000 car that's hitting 60 in three seconds. Quite, quite impressive. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those below. And I'm gonna get back on the throttle. That's what we're gonna do.